Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Where are you on the list of people that you take care of? Are you all the way at the bottom of your list? And if the truth be told, there's so many people to take care of that by the time you get finished taking care of all of them, you don't ever really get around to yourself. Do you find yourself saying things like, when is somebody going to do something for me? Are things like, I do all the work around here and nobody appreciates me. I'm getting a lot of head shaking out there. How many people do you take care of? I, take, I have to take care of a lot of people. I have a husband, four children that are grown, but let me tell you something, when your kids get grown, they don't stop being needy. They just are needy on another level. <laughs> Amen. We have 10 grandchildren and we're very involved with all of our children. I hear from Almost all of them every day. Our one son travels a lot of the country, so I don't hear from him every single day, but my grandkids are in and out. They need this, they need that. A lot of, you know, this child's having a problem with this child, and again, you know, got to talk and get involved. I have my mother, who is 87, and my aunt, who is 83, that I'm responsible for. They're both widowed, and so we take care of them, and that means the groceries, get them to the doctor's appointments, make sure everything is good. Now, my daughters help me with that, and that's very grateful, very grateful for that. We have 739 employees, we have 13 foreign offices. You know, my list just goes on and on, and I'm not trying to impress you, I'm just telling you that I know what you feel like if you have a long list of people that you feel like you're responsible for. Well, at one time, for many, many years, I was, way at the bottom of my list. Matter of fact, to be honest, I wasn't even on the list. It wasn't even a consideration to me because I'm a very responsible person and I do what I'm responsible to do. If you don't take care of yourself, and I want you to listen carefully to some of the things that I'm gonna say. They're just, some of them are one-liners that I think you need to hear. If you don't take care of yourself, you will get to the point where you can't take care of the other people either. You'll get to the point where you either physically can't do it, mentally you can't do it, emotionally you can't do it, or you will do it, but with such a bad attitude that everybody would just wish that you didn't do it. <laughs> it's not selfish to take care of yourself, it's wisdom. I read a number of books by a man named A.B. Simpson who has gone on to be with the Lord almost a hundred years ago, but he says a lot of things that I like, but I read this one not too long ago, and he said, temperance, which is self-control, is true self-love. <laughs> isn't that an interesting statement? Discipline is true self-love. So like, to discipline yourself to eat right is a way of showing that you love yourself. And before you think, well, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to love myself. Yes, you are. If you don't love and value yourself, then you don't love and value what God created. And he paid a tremendous price for you. So you need to value and respect yourself. And you need to take care of what God has given you. Discipline is true self-love. And having the proper regard for your own true interests is as much your duty as caring for the interests of other people. I thought that was an excellent statement. It's just as much your duty to take care of yourself as it is to sacrifice and reach out to other people. As Christians, I think many times we get in the ditch on one side or the other. We're either self-centered, self-absorbed Christians who go to church and put our time in, but we don't really live the life in public. We're not really doing anything for anybody else. We're not really making a difference in anybody else's life. 
And I'm very big on teaching about love and reaching out to other people and helping the poor and helping the needy and getting your own self off your mind. And that I could just preach on that forever and be happy. But we have to have the whole counsel of the Word of God. And in the midst of all that, you also need to do things for yourself. And if you don't, then you're going to get out of balance and you're going to be unhappy. And there's nothing more distasteful than an unhappy Christian because we're supposed to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. To love yourself is as much your duty as it is to love other people. So I think we either get in the ditch in one way or the other. We're either totally self-absorbed and we just don't think about anybody but ourselves. It never crosses our mind to do anything for anybody else. Or we finally get the message, I'm supposed to sacrifice, forget myself. There's a scripture that says forget yourself, but you can't even take that out of context. And so now I never do anything for myself. I just do everything for everybody else. And so over here, you can be a self-absorbed, obnoxious Christian. And over here, you can be a sacrificing Christian, but one who has a religious attitude and resents everything that they do and is all bent out of shape because nobody ever does anything for them. Is anybody out there in the building with me? You begin to do some things at your church and pretty soon they find out that you'll do some things and so then all of a sudden it seems like every time there's something to be done, you're the one that they call. And you're not very good at saying no and after three or four years you get bitter and resentful and when you get bitter and resentful then you start finding something wrong with everybody. Now the preacher's got a problem, the choir director's got a problem, you don't like the color of the church door, you don't like the people, you don't like anything anymore and it's your fault because you had to keep balance in your life and say, you know what, I can do this but I can't do this. Somewhere in your life, you've got to be in it. Somewhere in your life, you've got to be in it. Amen? Matthew 22, 37 through 39. People were asking Jesus, what is the most important commandment? He said, the most important commandment is you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul. This is the first and the most important commandment. And then he said, there is a second like unto it. You shall love your neighbor. Now watch, because I think we missed this part, as you love yourself. I never heard anybody share this scripture in the way that I'm sharing it today. I mean, I do now, but many years ago, as long as I'd been in church, I always heard the part about loving God and loving your neighbor, but the as you love yourself was kind of given a different context. It's like, okay, you're in love with yourself, so you need to at least love everybody else as much as you love yourself. But I don't really think that's what it means. I believe that God has given us responsibility in three relationships. And the Bible is about relationships. It's about our relationship with God, our relationship with people, and very importantly, it's also about our relationship with ourself. If you don't love yourself, it is impossible for you to love anyone else. It's just not possible. You know why? Because you can't give away what you don't have. If you have no love, no value for yourself, if you don't value yourself, how are you going to value anybody else? If you don't respect yourself, how are you going to respect anyone else? It's impossible for me to give away what I don't have. I have a glass of water up here, so if you said, give me some water, I could do that. But if my glass was empty, no matter how long you shouted at me to give you water, I could not give you what I don't have. And for years, I tried to be a loving person, and I did not know what my problem was because I sincerely wanted to obey the Scripture to love other people. And I just kept failing and failing and failing. And I finally realized that I didn't love myself. I couldn't be merciful to other people. I was harsh and hard-hearted and critical and judgmental. I couldn't be merciful to other people because I had not yet received God's mercy for me. I was too hard on myself. If you're too hard on yourself, you're going to be too hard on other people. If you demand perfection out of yourself, you're going to demand perfection out of everybody else. So if you've never done this, 
you need to take a break in your busy little life and you need to get to the bottom of what kind of relationship do you have with yourself? Do you like yourself? Do you love yourself? Do you value yourself? Do you respect yourself? Do you do things for yourself? Do you meet your valid needs without feeling guilty about it? Sometimes even if we do something for ourselves, there's this little demon hanging around in our space making us feel guilty that we did it. Well, you could have given that money away. You didn't need another pair of earrings. You could have done this. You didn't need to do that. You could have done this. Well, why are you laying on that couch watching that movie? There's still work to be done. Come on, am I telling the truth or not? Well, the bottom line of the problem is simply this. The devil does not want you to enjoy your life. That's just it. He does not want you to enjoy your life. You know why? Because Jesus died so that you might have and enjoy your life. John 10, 10, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life, 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 We're not here on the planet just to take up space and breathe. There's nothing I like better than to see my kids enjoying themselves. And I really love to see them enjoying one another. I don't think we realize how much God enjoys it when we're enjoying one another and enjoying ourselves. I don't think anybody appreciates a good laugh more than God does. He created fun. He created laughter. He created joy. The devil's the one that came up with misery and wretchedness and sadness and depression and despair and despondency and anger and unforgiveness. He comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life. You cannot enjoy your life if you don't enjoy yourself. How many of you think you don't value yourself as much as you should? How many of you don't really even like yourself all that much? I, mean, I got a bunch of this, you know. <laughs> it's all right to tell the truth. I mean, there was a lot of years I didn't like myself. I didn't like my voice. I didn't like my personality. I didn't like my thighs. I didn't like this. I didn't like that. Well, you know what? You just need to make peace with your thighs because the thighs you have are the thighs you have. I mean, you got to learn how to take what you got and do the best you can with it. If you can improve it, improve it. But if you're stuck with it, learn to love it. <laughs> Amen? If we ignore our own needs, we're going to end up bitter and resentful. And I can tell you that there are people here in this room and many, many more watching by television that, oh, you do things for people. Oh, but you got an attitude that won't quit. You're not doing them for the right reason, and you will not get a reward. When is somebody going to do something for me? Well, when you hear yourself saying that, why don't you say, I am going to do something for me? Okay, now listen, th th this is really important that you get this. Stop giving somebody else the job of keeping you happy. Now, if you didn't come for anything else except to hear me say that today, it would be worth your trip. Matter of fact, that would make a good Facebook post, wouldn't it? <laughs> Stop giving somebody else the job of making you happy. Oh, for so many years, I was mad at Dave because he wasn't making me happy. Well, first of all, I'd already determined not to be happy, so it didn't matter what anybody did, I probably wouldn't have been happy. But I was always looking at the things Dave didn't do. I mean, Dave's a wonderful man, and he's good to me, and he gives me freedom and liberty, and he lets me do pretty much anything I want to, and I can get what I want as long as I'm not being foolish and the money is there, but he's not the kind of guy that goes out and gets flowers and perfume, and, you know, he's just not a person who goes out and 
brings a bunch of gifts. And I mean, for years, I was like, well, I, you know, I wish you would bring me gifts. I'd see some other guy bring his wife gifts, and I'd think, I, well, why you don't do that? And then I was focusing on that. You know what I finally decided? If I want a gift, I'm just going to go get myself one. <laughs> Come on, it's time to grow up and stop giving everybody else the responsibility of making us happy. Okay, that's one thing maybe Dave's not real great at, but he is marvelous at 99 other things. So why focus on the one thing that somebody doesn't do for you? Why not focus on all the stuff that's good? See, he's a very logical guy, and this is what he says. There's no point in me going and getting it because you're going to take it back anyway. <laughs> and I mean, that's probably true, but he doesn't, you know, men don't get the whole emotional side of it. We want to think they ran all over town getting it, and then we'll gaga over it and secretly think, I really don't like this, so I'll have to sneak it back when he's not looking. <laughs> I'm telling you, my life changed dramatically. My joy level went from down here to up here when I stopped giving somebody else the responsibility to make me happy and just decided I'm going to be happy. I'm going to do things for me that make me happy, not in an out-of-balance way. I do lots of things for other people. I love to give. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love to help people. I love to watch for what people need and try to meet those needs. But I found out that I was starting to get bitter and resentful. He was like, well, what about me? 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 I'll just go ahead and do it before you make me. I mean, I sang that same old sad song so long, I bet God was not again. Please, I don't want to hear it. What about me? What about me? Nobody's going to do anything for me. Well, I work hard all weekend, and that's fine. We go home, and, you know, Dave goes out and plays golf, and I'm just left home by myself with nothing to do. But what about me? Nobody cares about me. Me, 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 me. Now, I know none of you are like that, though, right? I mean, I probably got the totally wrong crowd here today, but, you know, maybe there's just one person watching by TV that really needs my message today. You know what? I think that sometimes we know that we could go do something for ourselves, but we actually have gotten so addicted to the murmuring, the grumbling, the complaining, the chip on our shoulder, the martyr attitude, and the poor me attitude that we really don't even want to make ourselves any better. So we sit around and say, well, you don't do this for me, and you don't do that for me, and you don't do this for me. Well, today we're wiping out all excuses. If something needs to be done for you and nobody else is doing it, then do it yourself. But if you do that, then you can't murmur anymore. You know, Dave never gives me the job of making him happy. He's just like, gonna go play golf. Go into the ball game. Gonna go out and watch a football game. I mean, whatever he likes to do, he does. Well, I had lived su such a self-sacrificing spiritual. I mean, come on, I could have put the Pharisees to shame. And some of you could have been right on my team. We could have had a big group. I mean, I had been so self-sacrificing and so spiritual for so long, helping the whole world while nobody did anything for me, that by the time God got this across to me, and I started thinking, okay, that's it. I'm going to start doing things I enjoy. Now, this is sad, but I'm telling you the absolute truth. There was nothing I enjoyed. <laughs> I had worked for so long, done nothing but work, 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 and take care of other people. When I started saying, okay, now today I'm going to do something I want to do, I didn't know what to do. I mean, Dave would verify this. I mean, I had a hard time with this for a long time. It was like, I don't like anything. Because I had not done anything. I had not developed any interest outside of my work. 
I was so focused and so committed on what God had called me to do that I just didn't have any life outside of this. And it took me a while to learn how to like things. Now, here's something else I want to say that I think is important. Here's another mistake I think we make. I think we try to entertain ourselves. And God is not really calling us to entertain ourselves. He wants us to learn how to enjoy things. So I started out with the entertainment. I was going to try to entertain myself. So I went to this and I went to that and I took vacations and I did this and it was all just like you know how it is. You go on a vacation, you come back, and you're, none of it worked out the way you thought it would. You didn't have a great time anyway. You're tireder than you were when you went. And some people even go in debt to go do it, and now you've got to pay it off for a year, and you're like, Ugh. You know what I've discovered after a long, long, long journey that I don't have time to tell you all about? It's not so much about entertainment. It's about finding the simple things in life that you really enjoy. And most of them are really, really, really simple. Let me read you just a few of mine. I've discovered, and even in this last year, I really love beautiful things. And I think that's a godly trait, because if you look at how heaven's decorated, honey, it ain't ugly. I love things that sparkle. I love things that are pretty. I love brilliant colors. I just love pretty things. And so I'll just sit and look at things that are pretty and just enjoy that. Like, that's so beautiful. And it reminds me of God. I think there's so many things that can remind us of God and bring us closer to God if we just take the time. I saw a bird the other day that was the most beautiful color, blue. And there would have been years in my life I would have ignored that bird. I didn't have any time for that bird. I was busy being spiritual. <laughs> but I can still see that beautiful blue bird, and I just think how creative God is and how He's painted the world in such a beautiful, amazing way. And then we're in such a hurry trying to do whatever. I don't know. We don't even know what we're trying to do half the time. And we don't even pay any attention to those kind of things. A simple thing like taking a walk with a good friend. I love to just, you know, it, if I can find somebody that's decent to be with, and it's getting harder and harder these days, but if you can find a good friend, I love to just have a good cup of coffee with a friend. And not even like a long time, just maybe 45 minutes or an hour and just have a chat, just catch up and, you know, that's good. I love to be around kind people. I think that's so beautiful when people are kind and they're thoughtful and, and they're, they're good to other people. Always surround yourself with people that you can learn from. Don't be around people that drag you down. Surround yourself with people that you can learn from, people that will challenge you to come up higher. I love a good movie. I love to rest. Oh my gosh, if you don't like to rest, just wait till you get a little bit older, honey. You are going to love to rest. Dave and I just sit in our house at night now when we're home and we're just like. I mean, I've had 35 years of running all over the planet and being somewhere almost every night of the week and, you know, doing business till 9, 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, the kids are gone. There's nobody but me and Dave and the dog and we're resting. This is heaven. I love quiet. I love peace. I love to give. I really, really enjoy listening for something that somebody says that they would like to have and just going to get it from. Learn to put smiles on other people's faces. When you put a smile on somebody else's face, it'll put a smile on yours. Nothing gives me more joy than doing something for somebody else. So don't forget, you're gonna do a better job at caring for others if you also keep yourself strong and healthy and take care of yourself.